So, a true buff build. Mm. This one's a little bit different. Uh, we are utilizing two mechanics. We're also utilizing it in a way which would be considered weird. Um, however, it really does help our damage along, as well as the fact that it's really, really helping our team. Uh, Herbie, you can see in the bottom right there, gives a buff, I'm playing with other people. Um, and you can also see in the top left, I'm in Discord with Herbie, and we're just sort of talking through what his normal numbers were compared to what he is now currently getting with me playing as this build. He went through a variety of different builds, skill builds, DPS build, and a status build. And at one point, I do believe he also used a sort of semi-tank DPS build. And he was seeing a dramatic increase across the board on all of his numbers. I do believe that on his DPS build, he said that he was getting an extra roughly 200,000 extra damage. In total, this is a 27% buff. Typically, what people would normally do is run the chest from Future Initiative, which gives you a 10% increase on top of its normal buff. So you'd go from 15% to 25%. However, to maintain that, you always have to be at full armor. If you run Overwatch, though, you get a larger increase, admittedly not by much, but it's 27% when both are active. And your buff is now twofold. You get 15% when you are at full armor, and you will gain another 12% when I have been in cover for 12 seconds or in this case because I have a skill roll on my ferocious calm lucky for me you end up it ends up being 10 seconds essentially so the buff is now twofold if you lose all of your art or some of your armor you are still getting 12% if I happen to move out of cover and you're at full armor you're still at 15% so Although it is a little bit more mechanically for the buff player to maintain both, because they've con when they're in combat, you end up having to do cover-to-cover -cover maneuvers just to try and maintain the buff for the other players. What they see is a larger increase. Again, not by much, it's 2%. But it's not as conditional for them, really. They, are, they will always have a buff as long as their buff player is playing correctly. But yeah, that buff will always be there, regardless of whether they lose armor or whether you move. Something will always be there to maintain their, or help their damage. And overall, from speaking to Herbie, my lovely little clan mate, um, he was very appreciative of it. It did a lot of damage, as well as, because we're running Future Initiative, we can also act as a healer. Now, the way I've actually got this rolled is quite weird. It's mostly um, skill damage and skill haste, just so that I can get a bit of effect from the turret. I'm mainly there as a buff and to help provide DPS rather than a healer, but obviously Future Initiative is very heal orientated. And I am still playing around with what the best heal would actually be. I quite like the drone when it's just on me. However, trying to maneuver the drone around to help other people. Um, and as Herbie has also told me, the um, green affects like his ability to see and just it generally just bothers him, that weird green array coming down. And from myself playing as well, particularly if you have to look aim up, for some stupid reason, your drone loves getting in the way and you end up shooting your drone rather than what you're actually wanting to shoot at. So, for me, I actually quite like the drone, but it can get irritating and annoying. I did try out the Hive, however, without the BTSU gloves, it did seem a little bit not that well. Simply because people are going to be moving around a lot it's kind of, you can't really throw it that far and it then means that in order to heal them they have to come to you so off camera annoyingly I should have recorded some footage so I do apologize it's me being a donut I 
swapped to the chem launcher and started playing around with a bit more randoms. Uh, it's a lot more healing for one rather than what the drone actually provides. You can fire it at range, you can drop it on the floor for you. You have enough skill haste to actually maintain a decent-ish stack of chems unless your team is being absolute mongos. The chem launcher was generally just a better way to go. With certain situations, such as if you do have a particularly crazy DPS player, the drone is a little bit more handy in this situation because you just put the drone on them and then just hide in cover and let them go nuts and they'll constantly fluctuate between 12 and 27% damage. It also affects your skill damage as well, by the way. Future Initiative affects your skill damage and Perfect Over well, Overwatch as well as Perfect Overwatch are also both weapon and skill damage. Overall, this has actually been a pleasure to test. And if you are someone that likes playing as like a sort of team support role, I would urge you to test this out. It's actually really, really simple to put together and you can craft most of it, minus the Ferocious Calm, but you don't need Ferocious Calm specifically. So we are running Capacitor, as you can see, and I do have the new Reliable just in case I do need an extra burst of damage. For Peace Future Initiative, we are not using the chest or the backpack. For the backpack, we are running Memento, one for the skill tier, one for the weapon tier, and obviously the uh, lovely, lovely armor. And then Ferocious Calm, running skill haste and skill damage. All roles are skill damage on the Future Initiative, and it is actually just generally quite handy. Don't worry too much about the Ferocious Calm, I'd recommend just getting a Fenris piece and trying to get some sort of skill on it with Overwatch. Anyway, that just about does it for me. Have fun, good luck, and don't die. It's bad for the health.